See, I graduated from the academy actually 30 years ago. I was 20. So I had to wait until I was 21 to get hired. So I actually, uh, actually in service is 29 years, pushing 30. So we were technical. It's been, I got hired in 90, 1990. You know, my dad was military. So I grew up in, as a Navy brat, you know, dependent. And I think a lot of the lessons that I learned from my, my father and just, you know, growing up on Navy bases, military bases, a lot of the values, the, you know, the core values, they kind of align themselves with law enforcement. Uh, I went to three different high schools, a number of duty stations, you know, it seems like every four years or so we were moving. And when we landed here in Pensacola, I was 18 years old and I, I was a little punch drunk, I think. I was just, I don't, I'm done moving. Because the military was a big draw to me. And uh, I just, and I, I decided my senior year in high school actually that that's, this is what I wanted to do. So I went to college, I graduated high school, went to college and majored in criminal justice and then uh, and got hired. The rest is, here I am. It goes by so fast. What's been your main takeaway after nearly 30 years of service? You know, despite what you hear on the news, people are good. I, I think sincerely, the vast majority of, of the population, they just want to do good. They're good, kind people. And sometimes in law enforcement, especially in law enforcement, when you're working patrol or say investigations, I had worked crimes against children, I was assigned that job. And you kind of immerse yourself in that. And unfortunately in law enforcement, especially early on in my career, you know, I was, you spend your whole day looking for bad guys. Crack cocaine hit Pensacola in late 80s, early 90s. And it was an epidemic, and I think that's why it was such a rough city. We had a lot of shootings, a lot of homicides. There were places in Pensacola that we weren't allowed to go by ourselves. We had to wait for a backup officer into neighborhoods. They throw bottles at us, throw bricks at us. Pensacola is rough, and if you spend all day of your working life just dealing with that percentage of the population, that that group, it can kind of skew your perception of of the whole. And I, I think. Uh, having spent you know almost 30 years now in law enforcement a lesson learned and we really try to push that out to our new hires especially is to to swap that up a little bit don't spend your whole day if you spend your whole day looking for bad guys we, we push our community service aspect so hard here at the police department not just you know it's a constant battle with perception uh, if you again if you just watch the national news and that is your perception of law enforcement what you see on national news then it's, you know, it's going to skew. What happens in Baltimore and Chicago and some of these bigger cities affects the perception of law enforcement right here in Pensacola. So we push our community service aspect as much as we can because that's not a, a true representation of Pensacola Police Department. What do you want the general public to know about policing that may be a common misconception? It's, it's at the end of the day, we're husbands. You know, we're fathers, we're brothers and sons, and we're the officer. It is a, it's a job. And a lot of people can't separate the uniform from the person. Uh, so we'll go on, especially some of the calls where, you know, emotions are real high and they start that personal attack on officers. And that, you know, kind of, it can be biting sometimes. You know, we're still, at the end of the day, we're still people. And it's a difficult job. On a good day, it's extremely difficult and incredibly dangerous. And I think, you know, people, I wish people would appreciate that a little bit more. Uh, you know, it's, again, it's unlikely. The chances of us getting into a shootout are, are pretty slim, but it's happened. I've been in a shootout in my career. Uh, it's happened here in Pensacola not, not too long ago. So it is, again, it's incredible. Pensacola is a wonderful city, but it's still an incredibly dangerous job. How has technology changed policing? Oh, technology is a big, a, a big change in it. When I first got hired, you know, cell phones weren't readily available. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have computers. Not only did we not have in-car laptop computers, we didn't have computers at the station. You know, I was I had mentioned I was in uh, investigations, and we were still typing reports. Everything in the street was handwritten reports. So technology is a, was a driving force and a lot of change in law enforcement. The job is much harder today. I think we demand a lot more from our officers than we did when I got hired. I think it was more dangerous back then, just because the city, Pensacola in 1990, was, uh, there were some rough, rough areas in Pensacola, whereas it's, it's literally transformed in, over the, the 30 years that I've been policing here. Has technology made it, made it safer as well? 
I think some of the technology we talk, you know, the drone program makes our job safer. You know, just last year, if we had a barricaded suspect, we had to send a SWAT team, and there's, at the end of the day, you're going to have to send six guys into a into a very dangerous situation. Canine, when we're tracking people, it, it, you just have to turn the corner. You have a blind corner. You trust your dog as much as you can, but. You just, you know, three o'clock in the morning, it's pitch black and you're chasing an armed suspect. It's incredibly dangerous. And now with the drones, it allows us to get that bird's eye view and we can send that into a house. We can send that in front of an officer, especially on a canine track, that kind of stuff. So it's, and that may the, will make the job safer. I think that the, the technology that we have where we can get backgrounds much quicker and we can, the warrant services and that kind of is, makes the job much safer today as well. What kind of advice would you have for somebody who's thinking about coming into the police force? Uh, you know, I would recommend, high recommend that they spend some time, sit down and think about it. We encourage them to ride, do a ride along, because it, you ask that question, why are you, what makes you drawn to law enforcement? What is it about the job? And if it's, you know, CSI Miami or it's the, the television shows that they're watching, that is not that's not law enforcement. That's certainly not an accurate representation of law enforcement. Even cops, I cannot stand to watch that show. But even cops isn't an accurate representation of it because it takes, you know, live PD, that kind of stuff. It, you know, that's, they'll follow, a, they'll come in for two weeks to get a 30 minute segment. You know, it's, it's not all, especially in Pensacola, knock on wood, we're a safe city. You know, we haven't had, we had one homicide in a little over two years. We don't have violent crimes or historic lows. So you're not, it's not all chasing bad guys and car chases and that kind of stuff. A lot of it's the, a lot of paperwork, a lot of the mundane kind of stuff. Uh, so I, I think that talking to somebody about it, it's to, to really kind of understand what the job's about. Um. And every, every agency's different. Uh, of course, every city's different. So policing in Pensacola is significantly different than policing in Baltimore, policing in Chicago or New York, as you can imagine, or even at the Sheriff's Department. They've got a lot of rural areas, and we take for granted that we can get on the radio and, and call for help, and in five minutes you could have four police officers there. There are sections in Escambia County on the north end of the county where you know, you're 15, 20, 30 minutes before you get somebody there, and that's a significant difference. Uh, I, I go to a lot of conferences. I went, you know, training conferences as an officer in the SWAT team and dive team and investigations and all the, there's a, it's a lot of training involved in law enforcement, as you can imagine. It's a, a constant training cycle from the new officer all the way up to the chief. But a cop's a cop's a cop. You know, they have, it's, they are, I love, again, I just like talking to them. And the Scammy County Sheriff's Department, our sister agency, they have wonderful people but it's different policing in the county than it is in the city just because there's such a huge sections of the county that are rural and uh, so it's a, each agency is a little bit different a little bit of personality and you may succeed in at one agency and not really click at another agency so i would if you're going to interested in law enforcement and you want to make a career out of it i would don't settle on one agency necessarily have a conversation with the officers and and make that decision based on that What's kept you here so long? Uh, family is a big one. I'm very fortunate to have my family live here in, in Pensacola. And I love, I love the city. I have a passion for what I do. I love the profession of policing, and I can't imagine doing anything else. Uh, even 29 years goes by. I can't believe how fast it went. So how many more years do we have of Chief Leiter serving the citizens of Pensacola? So I'm going to drop in February. I'll, I'll enter the drop in February is my intention. So a lot of that's really tied to just my personal life with my, what my wife's going through with the uh, cancer diagnosis. So uh, I, I don't know, five years and then, you know, we'll see where that, where I end up. So uh, I just, I love coming to work. Even the bad days, I don't have any terrible days. There's some stressful days and there's some days that are just, you know, I got an officer injured or something like that. I got to visit somebody in the hospital. Even the tough days are, are not terrible. You get through them and then you come back and, and start it. I love what I do and I, I'm passionate about it.